You know I love to cook, but I also never turn down a good cocktail. So I learned how to make a drink to cool us down this summer and will surely help ease you into Sunday afternoon. Check it out. What goes better with this beautiful weather than a cocktail and who better to make it than our Weekend Express mixologist, Paul Calvert, coming to you for some good ideas for a cocktail, wine, and beer to pair with it. What do you think? Absolutely. So the, the key for me with entertaining, especially outside, is to make a drink that's refreshing, dry, crisp, goes well with food. And, and outside grill food is usually spicy, salty, juicy, meaty, fatty. So you want a drink that's going to cut through all that. This is a, a drink that is such a simple riff on a classic uh, margarita or a great old tequila drink called a Paloma. It's kind of like the two meat in the middle. So we'll make it together. It's so simple. Grab a glass. Any glass will do. I like a glass that holds a lot of ice. Get yourself a little pinch of salt. Eat and really, this in the drink, and this is why is this, that? Th well, this what is, the salt will do is it'll cut through some of the bitterness of the Campari. Now, you can squeeze your lime juice ahead of time if you want, but Lynn, we're going to do it old school. We're just going to pick up the lime That's right. and just squeeze it right, yeah, muscle. exactly, right into the drink, and then you can just drop that lime right in there. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, and I'll help you out here. We're going to get a little ice. Okay. All right, perfect. Now, grab your jigger, and this is the kind of thing that you can do. Uh, you know, by sight, but we're going to be a little scientific about it. We're going to do equal parts Campari, which is an Italian red bitter. has a kind of like bitter grapefruit quality to it. This is especially good because grapefruit season is over, so if you like to keep things fresh and local, like I do, you just sub in Campari. Also, a lot more alcohol in Campari than grapefruit. So now we're going to use an agave distillate called mezcal. Mezcal is similar to tequila, uh, but traditionally it has a kind of a more smoky, savory character. So it's going to go really well with those sort of southwest flavors of a, of, of a burger that uses jalapeno and or spiciness. spiciness. Exactly. Love that. So uh, flip your jigger around. We'll go. The bigger size. Yeah, the bigger size. Equal parts. So the better. However much you want, as much Campari as mezcal, just keep it equal. Okay. And one last little thing. Now. We're going to get a little fancy and use a tonic syrup. This is like all the flavors of tonic water, but concentrated in a syrup. So could just, you use regular tonic? You totally could. Absolutely. Yeah. So you don't need this. I just, you this know. This will go a long way with the guests. Though. Yeah, exactly. They see a little Check something like this. Check out my tonic syrup. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and actually, full disclosure, this tonic syrup is made by a good friend of mine in Charleston, South Aww, Carolina. nice. So a little Jack Rudy tonic. And now whatever sparkling water you like. Now, Lynn, the last thing I'm going to have you do, and I'll come and top you up is we'll grab that spoon here okay. and give it a good stir. You want to make sure, remember, you've got that lime juice and that salt down at the bottom, so you want to integrate all that into the drink. You got it. Yep, give that to you. Exactly. Give you a little Thank toss. you very much, ma'am. And now, let's get that refreshing flavor. Cheers. Down the hatch. Cheers to you. Mm, you get that little, great. like, savory smokiness? That's the mezcal. And the saltiness a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Love this pairing with a, a heavier burger, something lighter, Absolutely. maybe a wine would be nicer. Absolutely, yeah. This is a Spanish uh, wine. It comes from the Basque region, and it's called Chocli, hmm. T-X-A-K-O-L-I, Chocli. Is that the brand or the type of rosé? It's the type of rosé, and actually there's white chocolate and chocolate rosé and red chocolate as well. But the rosé chocolate I love, and it's really dry and crisp and refreshing. It usually slightly effervescent, so you get a little bubbles. Because it's meant to be drank young, so mm -hmm. it comes out once a year. Uh, and and it'll sell out, you know, uh, in Atlanta probably by August, September, or at the end of grilling out season. Uh, so you got to get it every year while you can and enjoy it while you can. Cheers to that. Cheers. Let me try this. Yeah. Oh, that's delicious. Isn't that great? It is really, really crisp. Yeah. And it just is smooth. Yeah. And you have that, no bitterness, that nothing. Zing, that little effervescence from the sparkle. It's got a little secondary fermentation. Beautiful. All right, so we do have some dudes in the house, and we need a beer for that. We do. No doubt about that. So for beer, uh, I, I tried to stay kind of in the same family with dry, tart, crisp, refreshing, good with food, but I brought two. Uh, I brought two because I wanted to showcase two totally different styles. Uh, I'm going to start with one out of Athens, Georgia, from a great brewery called Creature Comforts. This beer is called Athena, and it's an st old German style of beer, beer called a Berliner Weiss. So it's really tart and tangy, again, low in alcohol, great with food. What would it be similar to maybe something that I've tried before? Gosh, if you've ever had like a Saison or um, a farmhouse beer or anything that's got that kind of sour, tart, tang, mm -hmm. um, it's almost, it, you know, it, it overlaps a little bit with like white beers, like Blue Moon or, or any kind of wheat beers. There's yep. a little bit of that family there Cheers. too. Cheers. Oh, and it's nice and cold. Yeah. 
It almost has a little citrus taste yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got that kind of like lemon, orange yeah. peel, a little salty, like super refreshing, delicious. All right, this one I'm going straight from the can. Please do. We don't have another glass, so let's so go old school. This is what I did with this with beer. This, one. this is the uh, emergency, emergency drinking beer from Wild Heaven Brewery. And full disclosure, I actually collaborated on this beer. Oh, I, really? I collaborated on the recipe, so it's Very shameless, cool. shameless profiling. Well, let um, me do the taste test on yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. This is the beer for the people at your party who drink Miller Lite, Bud Light, Mick Ultra, but you want to serve them something local. Wild That's Heaven is in good. Avondale Estates outside of Decatur. This is local beer. It's essentially local beer. But Budweiser. tastes kind of like a light beer with a little bit of a hop flavor. Yeah. I mean, you get a little bit of that at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, there's a little dry zing at the end. This is what I call lawnmower beer. This is like daytime <laughs> lawnmower beer. beer. I love it. And I love that we can daytime drink yeah. and Paul preps us for our evening drinks. Yeah.